sports world's most complicated role model. Some say he carries the NBA's mantle. Today, he just needs to carry his Phoenix Suns. Team success has been directly linked to Barkley's individual success. While his failures have put this once show win series in peril, now the ultimate NBA pressure cooker awaits a deciding game seven. Sure, you can laugh in the face of sudden death, but will that fire burn bright today? We're going to go down shooting, and we're going to make sure there's no bullets left in our gun when it's over with. the Phoenix Suns versus the Houston Rockets. Yes, this is certainly the clutch game of the series. Better than 16,000, a capacity crowd at the summit. Houston fans embracing the Rockets for the seventh and deciding game of the Western Conference semifinal. And the home team has won 14 consecutive sevens. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert, along with Matt Dukas. And Matt, the last time that a visiting team won a Game 7 was back in 1982. Philadelphia 76ers did it to the Boston Celtics in Boston in the Eastern Finals. So this will not be an easy task for the Phoenix Suns. Well, there are a few factors in favor of the Sun. They are 9-6 and six in road playoff games over the last two years, 6-1 and one in games facing elimination, and more importantly, they believe they are the better and deeper team. Team. But for Phoenix to advance, Charles Barkley cannot get up a lot of shots. He has to get to the free throw line. He's got to rebound at both ends, and he has to keep the ball moving. The one main thing for Charles is that he does not try to do it all by himself. And the Houston Rockets feel they must get an enormous game out of their all-star center and the NBA's top defensive player, Akeem Olajuwon, if, if they are able to knock off the sun. Well, those accolades are very special, but without NBA champion attached to it, it does not have that much meaning to Akeem. His numbers have been consistently outstanding in this series. But the real barometer for the Houston Rockets is the shooting of Vernon Maxwell and Kenny Smith. In the three wins, they blistered the Nets at 53% in the losses, just 33%. For the Rockets to move on to the conference final, they're going to have to be very close to that 50 mark. And both teams have been hit by assorted injuries. For more on that, let's go to a modern shot. All right, thanks, Marv. I talked to Charles uh, Barkley and the trainer Joe Prosky. Charles is suffering a mild groin sprain. He has been using a muscle stimulator and ultrasound before the game. Says he is ready to play today. It won't affect his game. In terms of the Rockets, Otis Thorpe suffered a hip corner in the last game. He's been icing it and says he's ready to play. He did have the best quote of the week by saying he knows that Phoenix will try to rally around the chuck wagon, but it's hard to have a wagon train if you only have one wagon. Now, Vernon Maxwell took it even one step further by guaranteeing a victory here today, and Vernon is playing with numerous injuries. He has a sprained right wrist, a bruised left hand, and two sprained ankles. Now, in order for the Rockets to be successful, Mad Max, the man they call Mad Max, will have to contain himself emotionally. Here you see he was ejected from game six and then gets after a heckler after the game. I asked him about that. He said, that's all behind me. It's nothing but basketball today, and I'm ready to play. Mark? This is why I think we all started playing basketball and being involved in basketball. And when you're a little kid and start start shooting in the backyard, I don't think that they sit around talking about making a lot of money. You know, they talk about this is the seventh game of the playoffs, the NBA. You know, in my case, it was it was the Celtics versus the Lakers. You know, right? and that's the stuff you really dream about. And now it's happening, and uh, this is why we're all here. Miller Lite presents Cool Contact Golf. Yes, this summer, it's not just a sport, it's a free t-shirt. The Full Contact Golf.
Golf T-shirt. Just look for specially marked packages of Miller Lite at your favorite store. Find this can and win instantly. There are over half a million T-shirts to be won. Cool. Hey, cool shirt. Hey, thanks. Come on, full contact golf T-shirt. Come into full contact with you only from Miller Lite. Hey, great shirt. Great beer. Can your beer do this? Chances are, at one time or another, you've had a Chevy in your life. Maybe it's just because more people drive Chevrolets than any other brand. Or maybe it's because we've always believed that what it's really all about is finding a car or truck you can love. Over the next few months, Chevrolet will introduce more new cars and trucks than anyone else. Every one designed not just to occupy a space in your garage, but to find a place in your life. Genuine Chevrolet. below the skin in comfort. And what do you get? Cut a precision groove to help the Norelco lift and cut system shave even closer. And what do you get? Build a razor that shaves closer, smoother than ever before. And what do you get? The Norelco razor, our closest shave ever. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? By Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. And by All Sport Body Quencher. After this sports drink, the game will never be the same. Beautiful day in Houston, Texas. We're indoors at the Summit. And ready to check out the starting lineup. First for the Suns, Kevin Johnson and a slumping Dan Marley. One for his last 13 from the field. Up front, Phoenix staying with the revamped starting lineup. Oliver Miller with A.C. Green rather than Cedric Sabatos. And Charles Barkley playing through that full drawing muscle. There's Paul Westfall. Last year in his first season as head coach, guided the Suns to 62 win. Most ever by a rookie coach. This is second year. Hopes to uh, advance to the conference final. Vernon Maxwell, Kenny Smith in the backcourt for Houston. Maxwell ejected in the closing minutes of game number six. Akeem Olajuwon along with Robert Ory and Otis Thorpe. Thorpe has had an outstanding series. Rudy Tomjanovich in a second full season as coach of the Rockets. Took over as an interim coach for the final 30 games of 91-92. Helped to turn things around last year. In fact, finished only one first place vote behind Pat Riley in the uh, coach of the year balloting. And the officials, Daryl Garrison, Dick Cavetta, and Bill Oates. Game seven between the Houston Rockets and the Phoenix Suns. And we are underway. Kevin Johnson controlling the opening tip. Kenny Smith defending on Johnson. Nice pass, and Barkley is fouled. The foul committed by Ori. Well, the Phoenix Suns have put in a couple of new plays uh, about two or three games ago when they felt the Rockets were sitting in and waiting for just about everything. This is one made up just before the start of the game to try to get Charles Barkley going. It's very important that Charles not only do some scoring, but he's aware that he has to create shots for other people. Of course, Kevin Johnson is able to do that as well. Well, in the three losses suffered by the Phoenix Suns, Charles Barkley went to the line only six times, and you can see the way uh, things have changed in this series against Houston. He averaged 37 a game against the Golden State Warriors in that first-round sweep. Uh, that figure, though, ballooned by the sensational 56-point performance against the Warriors. Barry beating the Suns down the floor. Well, this is a pet play of the Houston Rockets. They normally save it for late in the game when they just kind of catch you sleeping. Here they pick the first offensive play of the game to catch the Suns napping. Game tied at two. Johnson off the pick. Shot clock at five. Barkley for three. And rebounded by four. Well, the Houston Rockets would be very happy if Charles Barkley stood out the perimeter and shot a lot of jump shot. Kenny Smith able to penetrate. Well, we talk about both Smith and Maxwell being right around 50%. They take so many three-point shots, it's hard to shoot that higher percentage. But that's how you get it up, by taking the ball to the basket. 
Oliver Miller for Dan Marley. Barkley getting the good position. Rebounded by Elijah Wong. He did, but he started to fade away because he knew Hakeem was on his way. He has been playing goalie back there and has done an outstanding job of covering up in the lane, blocking and changing shots. Ori for three. from Alabama hitting from downtown. Or he's shooting 32% from three-point land during the regular season. Rockets with a 7-2 start. Shot clock at five. Open three for A.C. Green. He has been on fire in that department. So far, both teams happy to give up the perimeter shot by A.C. Green or the Suns, in the case, giving up to Robert Ory, even though Ory made his, and uh, A.C. made three the other night. They'd rather see those kinds of shots. Elijah Wong to the fadeaway. It's the Rockets nine, the Suns two. Well, he obviously has a soft touch, but that's ridiculous. That thing went about eight feet in the air before it fell through the net. the Rockets after Phoenix scored the first basket of the game. Well, this has certainly been an unusual series. The Suns winning the first two games here in Houston. How about game two? Suns down 20 points in the fourth quarter. Come from behind here in Houston. There are people calling the Rockets chokers. Then in game three, Vernon Maxwell with a strong second half finish with 34, propelling the Rockets to the win. The Rockets even the series with that win in game number four. And then in game five, the Suns held to 39% shooting. And the Rockets with a convincing victory. Game six Thursday, the Suns back for the 103 to 89 win. A revived Phoenix offense on Thursday night. Well, Houston has hit all four of its shot attempts. Phoenix 0 for 3. Kevin Johnson unleashing. Got it by Ori. Here's Vernon Maxwell on the open floor. Maxwell with a high feed handled by Elijah Wan. Off the double team. Not able to hit, and Miller comes up with the rebound. Well, the team got himself caught too far underneath the rim, mainly because he was shoved there by Oliver Miller, still able to use his athletic ability to, to get up a clear shot at the hoop. Marley for three. Well, Dan Marley from way out. He continues to have the shooting problem. Nice pass from Miller, but Johnson came up short. Now, this is the one thing that the Suns did not want to happen. They wanted to get off to a good start, somewhat keep this crowd under control, and score close to 30 points in this first quarter. Eddie Smith off the mark. Miller with the outlet. And here comes Johnson going all the way. Kevin Johnson on the penetration. So the Suns miss their first six shots and finally convert. And they get that fast break mainly because Kenny uh, Smith fell to the floor and Maxwell stopped to help him up instead of first sprinting back on defense. Maybe could have stopped that play. Rockets nine, the Suns four. Eisenhorn played on a switch by Marley. Shot clock is down to five. Ori for three. Oh, this time for the straightaway. Robert Ori with a second from downtown. And Charles Barkley 12 to four. Sorry, Mark, Charles Barkley just staring at him. He's probably going to have to make a couple more before Barkley goes out on him. AC Green passed up on a three-point possibility. Oliver Miller. because the team Elijah one challenges every shot, even jump hook, and Miller knew he was in trouble. That's why he pushed off. Four minutes gone by. Rockets 12, the Suns 4. Elijah Wan. And Barkley with the rebound. Johnson with a one-on-one -on -one move stopped by Kenny Smith. Miller way off. And back comes Smith. Maxwell. Once again, the Rockets beating the Suns down court. Phoenix not really ready for Miller to take that kind of shot. Yes, he does have to keep Elijah Wan somewhat busy, but he's got to get a much better percentage shot than that last one. That was a wild one. Open shot for Johnson. 
Olajuwon guns it from Maxwell. Oh, the Rockets are up 16 to 4, and the Sox will talk it over. Well, the Rockets ready to run on any kind of steal or any kind of missed shot. They are running out quickly, releasing on the jump shot. They're the throw ahead to uh, Vernon Maxwell, and then Akeem Olajuwon on the strong rebound, looking up right away, never brought the ball down, hits Vernon Maxwell on the fly. The sequence will destroy itself, NBC Sunday. America is still the land of rugged individualists. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. And every one of them demands something different from their Chevy truck. But they all want the same thing. I go the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Since your face can't adjust to your razor, your razor should adjust to your face, which is exactly why we designed the Schick Tracer. The Schick Tracer is the only razor with blades that bend and flex to the unique shape of your face. So the Tracer gets in close for a clean, comfortable shave. And since you can't change your face, maybe you should change your razor. Schick, you're changing the face of shaving. A date on the calendar. Monthly exams. The beat of a heart. A glimpse into the future. All the pieces that add up to a large dose of caring and concern from a pioneer in managed health care. Because babies need to be taken care of well before they're born. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. Places you can go where birds aren't the only ones that fly. And fish aren't the only ones underwater. Where you can take a ride in the wild, or just a wild ride. But if you go to any of the bush gardens or sea world parks, bring your sense of adventure and your visa card. Because every one of these parks will take your breath away. But none will take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Over his illustrious 10-year NBA career, Charles Barkley has been involved in a number of big games. What is his mindset going into this type of game? Nobody slept last night. Anybody tell you they slept last night, they're lying. You're in a, you, were, you didn't get much sleep and you were up early again this morning. Everybody's hyper. It's not a scared, a, a scared, it's, you want to get the game started. We're very fortunate that we're playing the first game today. You don't have to sit around all day and worry about it. I think Charles Barkley using a little bit of reverse psychology. There's no question. You're going to have butterflies before a game like this, but maybe they talked about it too much. Well, Phoenix has come out and missed eight of its first nine shots. Barkley to the fadeaway. Charles Barkley with his first field goal. The Rockets 16 and the Suns 6. Smith and Vernon Maxwell in the backcourt of Kim Olajuwon, Otis Thorpe, and Robert Ory on the front line. Here's Thorpe over Clay. Just checked in. Otis Thorpe with the hook shot against Joe Klein. Joe Klein had a good game on, on Thursday. Early entrance for Klein replacing Oliver Miller. Barkley got the step and just did get it off the glass, beating Elijah Wild. Well, it's always an effective play when the Suns run that little two-man play with Kevin Johnson and Charles Barkley. Hakeem saw it coming, got there, but just couldn't get a hand on it. Maxwell had Thorpe driving for the hoop. Thorpe saying, my fault. A.C. Green getting down court in a hurry. A.C. Green, 9 for 10 in game 6. 22 points Thursday night, and he has been hitting the long-range shot. Elijah Wan stopped by Klein. Here's Ori, lost it. Stripped by Barkley. Three on two. Marley all the way. Yes, and it counts. Dan Marley with the basket, and he'll go to the line. 
Well, Dan Marley, who has really been struggling from the perimeter, shooting decent three-point shots, but not much else as Charles Barkley turns on the defense, flips that ball loose from Robert Ory, and this is what Dan Marley needs to get himself going. Some so-called easy baskets, some layup, some higher percentage shot as Paul Westfall. Nobody more happy than Paul in this building to see Dan Marley finally get a hoop. Dan Marley 0 for 6 in game 5 in 20 minutes, 1 for 7 the other night in game 6. And that one basket was a tip-in. 18-13. Rockets up with 5.20 to go in this first quarter. Elijah Wan with a bad pass. Threw it into a crowd. Kevin Johnson had it knocked away. Back comes Maxwell. Maxwell trying to accelerate. Good play by Green to bat it. And last touch by the Rockets. Oh, the crowd doesn't like it, but you can tell by the reaction by Maxwell that it was a good call. Quick, quick hands by A.C. Green to bang it off the knee of Vernon Maxwell. Both Smith and Vernon have been taking the ball to the basket more. When, this, when the Rockets play their best basketball, not just relying on the jumper. Rockets committing four consecutive turnovers, adding to that 7-0 run by the Suns. Rockets have that good spurt. Suns getting back into it. Court. He was fouled, hit by Marley. Otis playing with that hit pointer. One of the reasons for the change in the starting lineup for the Suns two games ago, getting A.C. Green in there and Cedric Sabalas out was so Charles Barkley would not have to match up with Thorpe. And the Rockets were going to that time and time again inside, and Thorpe is a very good low post player. Also, Cedric Sabalas has not been an effective player against the Rockets. His inside game and all those little shots around the basket seem to be negated by Akeem Olajuwon. As a result, Cedric Sabalos playing only three minutes in game six. Otis Thorpe missing on both. Here's Joe Klein. Good hustle by Elijah Wong. Well, the Suns always looking for transition opportunities, but they don't need a quick shot like that from Joe Klein. He's better off standing on the perimeter and getting kickouts. Thorpe gets inside. Otis Thorpe in his 10th season out of Providence. A.C. Green is fouled. And you just saw an example of that transition by the Suns. Robert Ory collecting his second foul. Both teams have been guilty of not getting back quickly enough. Of course, you have some of the quickest players in the NBA right now, especially the Suns with Kevin Johnson, who looks up the floor at every time, and A.C. Green religiously runs the floor every time. Not just when he thinks he's going to get a pass or he thinks there's an opening. He runs all the time to put pressure on his opponent. A.C. Green, a 74% free throw shooter. This series, only 51% at the line. Robert Ory, after picking up his second foul, will sit down, replaced by Mario Eli, who comes off a 15-point game on Thursday. Rockets with a 20-15 lead. We come up on four minutes to go in this first quarter. Houston Rockets finished at 58-24 and in the regular season. They won the Midwest Division by three games over San Antonio, then defeated Portland in the opening round, three games to one. Here's Elijah Wan, rebounded by Green. A.C. Green now being played by Mario Eli. Barkley for three, yes! Charles Barkley has nine points, and the Suns, after the slow start, are now within three. I've been watching Charles run up and down the floor, Marv. He is hurting. Yeah, that's why he stood out on the perimeter. He feels that's probably the only way he can help his team right now. He's not moving very well. Now Thorpe and Green got involved on the, on the follow through after that hook. Here's Marley for three. And rebounded by Elijah Wan, his sixth rebound of the quarter. Maxwell trying to pull up. But both teams, every player on the floor has the gun ready. And I don't care where they're standing. Every shot looks like a good one to each of the players. Beautiful lead from Kelly to set up Elijah Wan. A 
He with a second field goal. He has four. And the Rockets have a four-point lead. This is a Phoenix Suns team that went 56 and 26 in a very tough injury hit campaign. They finished second in the Pacific, seven games behind Seattle. Won their last seven games of the regular season. And then they swept the Golden State Warriors in the first round of the playoffs. Sparked by Charles Barkley. Marlin not able to hit, but Klein gets another opportunity that lost it to Smith. Kenny Smith off the steal, eluding Barkley. Maxwell kept it alive. Back come the side. Kevin Johnson for Dan Marley. Well, Marley got to continue shooting, but he's going at the same pace. One for five thus far. Oh, Smith. Oh, with the reverse going glass to get the Rockets. A six point advantage. Well, the biggest waste of electricity right now is the shot clock. They don't even need that thing. Both teams are using about four or five seconds every trip down the floor. Well, Matt Phoenix has already attempted 20 shots. Houston 18. And Johnson is fouled. Foul on Otis Thorpe. We'll be right back. Miller Lite presents No Contact Golf. Yes, this summer it's not just a sport, it's a free t-shirt. The Full Contact Golf t-shirt. Just look for specially marked packages of Miller Lite at your favorite store. Find this can and win instantly. There are over half a million t-shirts to be won. Cool. Hey, cool shirt. Hey, thanks. Come on. The Full Contact Golf t-shirt. Coming into Full Contact Golf. With you. Only from Miller Lite. Hey. Great shirt. Great beer. Can your beer do this? It's been called the hard wiring of collective consciousness, the most significant historical shift since the Industrial Revolution, a worldwide conversation between millions of people via computer, scientist to scientist, teacher to teacher, student to student, but mostly it's called Network MCI. The possibilities are endless. How'd you like to buy a car with some serious attitude? The Achieva Sport Coupe. It's your money. We'd like to point out that the preliminary matches for World Cup 2010 have already begun. And luckily enough, good seats are still available. McDonald's, proud sponsor of the world's biggest soccer game. Even prouder sponsor of some of the world's smallest. Coming up next, Sudden Death Saturday continues when Dikembe Mutombo and the Cinderella Nuggets face Carl Malone and the Jazz in a Game 7 showdown. Next on NBC. Well, it's been a very difficult injury hit season for Charles Barkley, bothered by a bad back and an injured knee and now a full groin muscle. And Matt, as you mentioned, looks to be looks to be struggling with the, the full groin. Let's go to Amon for more of that. All right, Marv, I just spoke with Charles during that timeout and asked him about that groin pull, and he just shook his head. He's in a lot of pain, but like he said before the game, this is the kind of pain that he'll have to play through, and it can't keep him out of a game like this, but he is certainly not operating at full strength. Mark? He is off to the good start, though. Three of six, including one from downtown. He's the high man with nine points. Kevin Johnson at the line as we resume. A minute and 55 to go in this first quarter. The Rockets now lead. 24-19. Charles Barkley is at his best when he's taking the ball to the basket, getting to the offensive boards, and making the defense react to him. Right now, he doesn't seem to have the movement to do that, and what he'll try to do then is take a lot of perimeter shots. If he makes them fine, the Suns can stay in the game. If he misses, the Rockets are going to lay it up at the other end. Substitution for Houston, Sam Cassell, the rookie from Florida State, has checked in, along with the veteran Earl Curitan, involved in that battle with Joe Klein, and that was last touch by Klein. How about Earl Curitan, 36 years old, 
spent 10 years in the NBA. He was signed late last month. Three months ago, he was playing for Magic Johnson's barnstorming team in Europe. Here's Elijah Wan. Six points for Elijah Wan. And the Rockets are up 26 to 20. Jordan play when you were playing that? <laughs> Seems like that. I was an assistant coach ah. when Earl Curran was with the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm going with the steal. And Cassell gets it down for Ellie. Well, the Rockets have a small front line in there and lots of speed on the steal by Maxwell. Ellie taking off, and it's a cross-match situation. Ellie has been guarding A.C. Green at the other end, but Charles Barkley is trying to guard him at the other end, and A.C. Green actually has to pick him up first. Mario Ellie has been a very valuable player for the Houston Rockets. The greeting for Mario's good friend Danny Ainge, who just... <laughs> Uh, checked in that off the, the incident in which he fired the ball and uh, clipped Ellie, leading to a, a fine assessed on aim. And he admitted to doing it because both Ellie and Elijah Wan were celebrating. A minute to go in this first quarter. Line with the fake. Line with the rebound. Well, in game six, Joe Klein got a lot of wide open jump shots because Elijah Wan was patrolling the basket area. The coaching staff of the Rockets talked to Keen, showed him on tape. So now that little hit fake, he was out there to challenge that shot. And Keen will try to do anything he can to help his team win in every phase. Joe Klein signed as a free agent after four and a half years with Boston. Originally a number one draft pick of the Sacramento Kings back in 1985. Hard-nosed, solid backup. I would say the quintessential backup center. Well, Mark West, who normally is the starter for the Suns, he's bothered by injuries throughout this playoffs, and that's what has put Oliver Miller into the starting lineup. However, at the start of today's game, Oliver was totally ineffective at both ends of the floor. The cell getting it inside. It's a 10-point lead. Well, you just don't want to give Earl any easy shots like that. You want to try to make him make a jump shot before he gets off for the layup. Charles Barkley just never saw him. Barkley, another three-point attempt with 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Rockets up 31-21. And looks like Cassell and Ainge got involved. Cassell pointing at Ainge. Ainge walking towards him. Double checkers have been called by Bill Oates. So the battle continues. Danny Ainge and the rookie Sam Cassell having words. Double technical on Ainge and Cassell. Cassell's teammates are trying to calm him down. And Dick Pavetta comes over to tell us double personal and double technical for the lucky called on Ainge and Cassell. Well, look at the right side of your screen down on the bottom over there, over on the right. Both Danny Ainge and Sam Cassell, the rookie, getting all tied up there, and they start shoving away. First, Dick Pavetta, I thought, was going to call just a double foul, and as he turned to go to the scorer's table, referee Billy Oaks saw more talking and more motions for going together and decided to call the double technical. These are two fiery players. Sam Cassell now being calmed down by Mr. Mean himself, Larry Smith, who also played in very aggressive fashion. Maxwell off the ball. But the rebound handled by... Well, the Suns have a small front line in there with Ben Marley out there, but he didn't keep him off the board. Ains was surprised by that pass. Confusion by the Suns in these final seconds as the first quarter comes to a close. The Rockets are fired up. 
They lead by 12 after one. Houston shooting 15 of 24, 63% in the first quarter. Grandpa Shaq, tell us how basketball used to be. <laughs> Well, the basket wasn't always 20 feet tall. What about 100-yard courts? Not even close. What happened? All sport. New All Sport. Unsurpassed taste. A third more carbs than Gatorade for energy. This is a body quencher. After All Sport, the game was a breeze. Until they put in the moving basket. All Sport. The game will never be the same. Polaroid asked me, Sinbad needs supermodels to demonstrate the sleek, stylish Captiva camera. It holds the pictures inside the camera special pocket until you take them out and put them in a, your pocket. <laughs> My pocket. <laughs> the Polaroid Captiva. Debbie, these shots are fabulous. Beautiful, Debbie. Better than the last time, Tony? Absolutely. It's my job to make sure people look good. A few weeks ago while doing test shots with Debbie, I noticed something. Dandruff. So I told her about Head & Shoulders. You see, regular shampoos merely rinse flakes away, so they could come back. But look, Head & Shoulders helps stop flakes from even forming. See the difference? Yeah, picture perfect. Head & Shoulders turns dander problems into beautiful hair. If you buy a Honda Accord DX for over 14,000, chances are you'll find a few things missing. Like this. That's right. That 14 grand Accord DX doesn't even come with a radio, not to mention all this other stuff. Unlike the Achieve the Special Edition from Oldsmobile, which has all that and more for only $13,995. No problem. It's your money. This is the perfect time to try my new Polaroid Captiva. Hey, where's the picture? There's no picture? How can that be a Polaroid camera if there's no picture? The Polaroid Captiva. The pictures stay in until you take them out. Maybe if you shake it. Yeah, shake the camera. As you might expect, Danny Ainge has not been a favorite of Houston Rocket players or Houston fans off this incredible incident that took place in Game 3. Well, Danny Ainge very upset with the actions of Mario Elliott and Elijah on there as the Rockets were pumping the Phoenix Suns on their home floor and celebrating what Danny felt way too early. And he said he intentionally threw the ball at him, but did not intentionally try to hit Mario Elliott in the face. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what he was aiming for. But, you know, Danny was a, a, not a pitcher, but an infielder and a pretty good arm. Yes, he was whipping throws from across the diamond from uh, third base in his brief tenure with the Toronto Blue Jays. Ahmad just uh, mentioned that Sam Cassell, who got involved in that, that tirade a moment ago with Ainge, just apologized to his team for losing control. Well, Rudy T. bought it because Cassell is back on the floor. Elijah Wan coming up short. Cassell with the save. Second quarter just underway. Here is Cassell. And a foul is called. It is a hack. Foul committed by Ainge. His second. Well, Danny Ainge has to get himself under control right now. You do want to challenge every jump shot, but a foolish foul there as I think Danny is getting a little bit caught up with the actions with Cassell, with Mario Eli, and with Bernie Maxwell. He's going to be a very important factor for the Suns today as they're going to have to find some kind of scoring other than Kevin Johnson, other than Charles Barkley. They're going to have to get scoring from other sources. Danny Ainge going to have to be one of those guys. Sam Cassell, a first-round draft pick out of Florida State. He's given the Rockets a 35-21 lead. Kevin Johnson, his second field goal, he has six, and it's Houston by 12. Houston got off to the fast start. They led 16 to 4. Phoenix missing eight of their first nine from the field before they were able to settle down. Seventh and deciding game between the Suns and the Rockets. A minute into the second quarter. Miller. With his first bucket. Well, after a couple of four shots in the early going, that time he didn't waste any time, just tried to shoot the ball in rhythm. And it's going to again, it's going to be somebody else for the Suns to make a contribution. 
Rajuan fires it cross court to Ellie. The pass picked off by Barkley. Here's Miller racing with Casal. He comes up with it. Open shot for Kenny Smith. And he is very upset with Oliver Miller. He feels his one job out there is to not lose sight of Elijah Wan. Keep his body on him at all times and not give him those easy baskets. He's going to get enough of the other five. Rockets by 12. Miller gets inside and draws the foul. The combination of Puritan and Elijah Wan reacting. Garrison had the better look. Garrison did make the the travel call, but apparently the the players did not realize it as Pavetta was calling the foul. Shot clock at six. Smith for three. And a loose ball foul is called as Jordan hits the deck. as he is hit with his first personal. Nine minutes and 40 seconds remaining in his first half for Rockets by 12. And now Barkley being up to the side by his coach Paul Westall. The Cinderella Nuggets face the Jazz in a Game 7 showdown, next on NBC. Well, as I was saying, I'll bring the cold drafts, and you just bring those beautiful eyes of yours. Yeah. Could you hold on? When cold filtered, it's cool enough. Hi. It's your shot. Ice draft. I've got to go. Susan. It's ice brewed below freezing, then cold filtered. Better draft. Taste the future. Ice draft. Only from Budweiser. Woody. Time to make big cheap. Happy cheap. Keeper. They're faster. Tougher. Damn, that looks like it hurts. Wilder. We ain't from around here. Really? Then New York City. Oh. The Cowboy Way. Pepper. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, June 3rd at theaters everywhere. The new Accord EX Coupe. There's more horsepower. Handling and comfort are perfectly balanced. It has dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. We've taken it about as far as you can go. The new Accord EX Coupe. From Honda. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality automobiles in America for the past 11 years. By the people at Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And by new ice brewed ice draft from Budweiser. Taste the future of draft beer. Well, a couple of minutes ago, we had a disputed call. Dick Pavetta underneath calling a foul on Akeem Olajuwon. The outside official, Daryl Garrison, noticing the feet of Oliver Miller as he shuffled them before he was in the act of shooting, and an accurate call there. At the other end, Earl Curitan getting excellent inside position on Charles Barkley, and Charles just with a little shove. The good acting job by Earl Curitan to draw the foul. Another good call by Daryl Garrison. He's two for two. Yeah. 
Earl Curitan, one time 76er, one time Piston, played for Charlotte. The Clippers. He was with the Knicks briefly. He has resurfaced in the NBA after a tour of Europe with the Magic Johnson barnstorming team and uh, then saw some action in the CBA with Sioux Falls. And a foul is called. It's an offensive foul on Otis Thorpe who just checked back in. Well, Akeem, Akeem Elijah on the bench getting a rest right now. They want to get inside to Otis Thorpe, who's a very good post player. A.C. Green, who works hard defensively, but believe it or not, gives up a lot of strength there. Actually, the offensive foul by Thorpe. And Cedric Sabatos has come on for the first time. Here's Green for three. So A.C. is not hitting the three-pointers here in the first half. Thorpe posting up on Green. Rebounded by Sabanos. Johnson and Ainge in the backcourt. Barkley, Green, Sabanos up front. Suns incidentally in a one of eight from three-point land. Nice move by Johnson. Eight points for Kevin Johnson. And the Rockets now lead by ten. Matt, you look back over the three Houston victories this series. They shot 54% field today Houston at 55 percent there are Garrison blowing the whistle there, AC Green and Otis Thorpe have been banging away at each other inside as AC tried to get that position kind of a cross check from behind by Thorpe as he hit him in the back and the back of the head apparently AC Green sustained a cut and he is headed back to the locker room, followed by Phoenix trainer Joe Prosky, so they'll take care of that. Right in the back of his head, he obviously caught the tip of the elbow, which should cut his skin, and he'll have to get tended to by trainer Joe Prosky. And the short rest of Akeem Olajuwon is over. It must have been fun for the sun fall last week. Here's Cassell. Sam Cassell providing a 39-27 Houston lead. Rockets have led most of the way. Phoenix with the first basket of the game. And then the Rockets were on fire. Klein came up short. Back comes Smith. Whips it down to Ellie. Ellie for Elijah. And Klein rebound. Now the Suns want to run. Rockets get back. Barkley passed on the open shot. pass for Sabatos. Barkley did not want the screen from Ainge. He waved it off and then was able to drill it down low. And I think Charles also realizes that the Suns have taken too many quick shots in this first half. They've got to get better percentage shots. Beautiful move by Akeem Olajuwon. Ten points for Olajuwon. He's hit five out of twelve from the field. Rockets by twelve. Olajuwon with his eighth rebound. Cassell for three. Barkley on the box out. Looking over to Darrell Garrison, feeling his case. He felt he was hit. Well, they've already had a long debate on the previous push-off by Barkley on Curitan. Charles going to try and do anything he can. He's laboring physically right now. Sabalos. Rebounded by Thorpe. Cassell pushing it down. Cassell able to penetrate, and then it's kicked out of bounds. Last touch by the Rockets. And Charles Barkley took that charge on Cassell, and when Cassell fouled, he rolled over onto Charles, right in the area where that groin is really bothering him. Charles writhing in pain right now. He's having all kinds of problems. But all that lobbying with Darrell Garrison may have paid off on this call as he moved, really, and not, was not set in taking that charge. But right here, as Cassell reacts, he's trying to get up and in some way injure Charles Barkley. Timeout called with 6.55 remaining. In the first half, it's the Rockets 41 and the Suns 29. Just sitting here in my Integra. Yeah, well, I guess technically it's our Integra since I don't make the payments, but hey, I don't get to drive it. 
Oh, look at this guy. Look, he just spotted it. He is in awe of this car. I love it when humans drool. Oh, he's coming over to check it out. Okay, watch this. I'll give him a thrill. <laughs> hey, man, don't drool on my Integra. Woof, woof. Are you still drinking the old thing? Try the next thing, Powerade. With 33% more carbos than Gatorade and a taste you can really slam. Powerade, the next thing. One of the guys found one new burger that eats like two. Introducing the tasty new Mega Double Cheese from Burger King. One sandwich with two burgers for one third pound of flame broiled taste. It's 50% bigger than our double cheeseburger used to be. And at the everyday price of just $1.99, since the burger got bigger, the value did too. The new Mega Double Cheese, just $1.99 every day at Burger King. We may not be the world's number one fast food place, it just tastes that way. This is where it happened. I was lying in a ditch, face down, trying to breathe. I was lucky. Most people who get thrown from their cars have injuries so serious that their lives are never the same. A lot of them die, and like me, most of them weren't wearing a seatbelt. It's the simplest thing. Please buckle up every time. It can save your life. Thompson, Peter Weller, and Emmy winner Farrah Fawcett in her triumphant return to television, The Substitute Wife on NBC Monday. On that last penetration by San Casella on the uh, down the lane as he bangs into Charles Barkley, he felt that that ball went off the back of the leg of Charles Barkley, and he's trying to indicate to the official just what happened, and watch the back of Charles' left leg as it rolled right down the back of his heel, and Sam Cassell was correct. But the position of Sam Cassell in lying against the very weak right leg of Charles Barkley as Charles is in a lot of pain just trying to get the young rookie off him. All right, for more on Charles' his status at A.C. Green, or a moment ago, headed back to the uh, Phoenix locker room. Let's go to Ahmad. All right, thanks, Marv. Matty, you hit it right on the, on the head with Charles Barkley. He just restrained that injured groin. Anytime he gets out of control, it's put too much pressure on the leg. In terms of A.C. Green, he took a shot from Otis Thorpe. Uh, Otis Keith hit him in the back of the head, and they are now putting sutures in the back of A.C. Green's head, and he will be prepared to play as soon as they finish. Marv? Thank you, Ahmad. Phoenix continues to have difficulties with the outside shot, and they're one for nine from downtown. 6.20 to go, first half. Rockets 41, the Suns 29. Rockets only three of 10 here in the second quarter, but they've maintained the 12-point lead. Elijah Wong, rebounded by Marley. Excellent defense that time by Klein to challenge the shot by Hakeem. Barkley for three. Ball foul is called on Klein. Elijah Wano has excellent footwork down on that baseline. You're always afraid of him making that move into the lane for the jump hook, so you make him go the other way. He makes a strong move, and Joe Klein did the best he could, just went up with the outstretched arm to try to make him change it. Phoenix Suns went all season, never losing more than two straight games, but they lost three in a row. The Houston in this series able to bounce back with the win Thursday to keep it alive. Klein with the rejection. Klein stopped Ori. He's out of court. Well, that could get the Suns going. They now trail 41 to 31. Well, the Suns are not known as a solid defensive team, but they do have their moments, and Joe Klein has given them a lift on the last two trips by Houston. Maxwell not happy with the hand check by Marley. Mad Max, Vernon Maxwell trying to set it up. Barkley hit the floor once again, and a foul is called. Barkley pushed by Thorpe, and that's three on Otis 
Otis Thorpe. Well, Charles tried to battle Otis Thorpe before he gets pinned, and Charles really just touched there and goes through the act and gets the call. You may be wondering why Charles is playing so many minutes while he's in such discomfort. When you have a pulled muscle like that, the worst thing you can do is sit down because then you're going to cool off and you don't know if you'll ever get back into the ballgame, or at least that's what Charles is telling Paul Westfall right now. Leave me out there. Yes, Charles, as you can see, is hanging in throughout the pain. Otis Thorpe take it out. Earl Curitan checks back in. Here's Ainge for three. Rebounded by Elijah Wong. And the Suns, one for 11 beyond the three-point line. Thanks for to sell now at the guards. Curitan, beautiful shoot for Cassell. Earl Curitan been a factor here in the first half. All set up because the Suns really worried that Dan Marley can't stay with Maxwell. They all look to help him, and that opens spaces up for Curran and Cassell. Danny Ainge hears it from the crowd. Marley, a good close. Wild. He's one for six. Maxwell with the room. Vernon Maxwell. And the Rockets lead it 45. To 31. But Sam Cassell is in pain now. Did you have a finger? It's like a thumb. But blocked by Elijah Wong. Well, Cassell now back to the offense. Cassell going all the way. I guess he's all right. But it always feels much better at the offense of Ed Mark than at the defense of Ed. The Suns call for time. Four minutes to go. First half of the seventh and deciding game. And the Rockets enjoy their biggest lead of the day. Teens held in death of four-year-old. Two teenagers were charged with second-degree murder for the April drive-by shooting of a four-year-old girl. The girl was in her living room getting ready for bed when a bullet pierced the front window and struck her in the head. She died instantly. This incident marked the 10th homicide in Phoenix this year involving juveniles. Participate in the lives of America's youth. If not now, when? The Air Force has the stealth. Music has Sinatra. Paris has the Eiffel Tower. As I was saying, I'll bring the cold drafts, and you just bring those beautiful eyes of yours. Yeah. Could you hold on? When cold filtered, it's cool enough. Hi. It's your shot. Ice draft. I've got to go. Susan. It's ice brewed below freezing, then cold filtered. For a smoother, better draft, taste the future. Ice draft. Only from Budweiser. Imagine TV's Urkel living out his fantasy to play with the New York Knicks. Amazing performance for Jaleel. Crystal Bernard becomes a star astronaut. Roger Austin Copy. Brian Austin Green creates a little magic, and Sinbad gets in deep with dolphins. This is better than when I got on Starship. Fantasies of the Stars, NBC Tonight. Bob Costas back in New York on the Prudential Halftime Report. We'll preview the second game of our doubleheader, Game 7 of the Denver-Utah Series. We'll hear from Dick Enberg and Snapper Jones, who will call it from the Delta Center. And we'll also get the thoughts of Julia Serving and Bill Walton here in the studio. Right now, back to the summit where the Rockets are having their way with the Suns, leading it by 16. Back to Marvin Matt. Thank you, Bob. Houston with that 16-point lead, as you say. The Phoenix Suns struggling with the outside shot. Only 1 for 11 from downtown. And Dan Marley could not turn it around. 0 for 6 in Game 5. 1 for 7 in Game 6. And that was a, a tip-in. And today, 1 for 6 from the field. And he is 0 for 3 from downtown. And you can see it in his eyes right now. He has had a very low ebb as far as confidence is concerned. And he just does not get enough easy baskets to make up for all the three-point shots that he takes. And he has no life in his step right now. Not doing a good job at the defensive end either. A.C. Green back at the Phoenix bench and getting ready to check in. 
took five stitches in the back of his head, the result of the cross up to the bottom of the net. Danny Ames, got to fire it up, and the crowd certainly enjoyed that touch. Well, he was momentarily open. This pass came a little bit too late, but nevertheless, Danny heard and felt the footsteps and the long reach of Akeem Olajuwon. He forced him to throw it over the backboard. A.C. Green has checked back in. Robert Ory for Mario Eli. And Akeem Olajuwon in a battle down low with A.C. Green. Green with the box out rebound. Johnson. Oh, what a move. Yes, and it counts. Kevin Johnson on the penetration. Able to beat Sam Cassell off the dribble. Well, Paul Westfall with his ball club down 14 points, trying anything right now, going to the small lineup, which he has used throughout this series. A.C. Green on uh, Akeem Olajuwon that time it paid off as he did a good job on the box out. Actually, he had Danny Ainge breaking long for a layup. He did not look up, however. Three-point play for Johnson. He has 11, and the Rockets are up 47-34. Three twenty to go. In this first half, Marv Albert, Matt Kukas, and Ahmad Rashad from the summit in Houston. Bad shot by Elijah Wong. But Cassell on the recovery. Oh! Elijah Wong! Elijah Wong got position. He has 12 points. He leads the Rockets in scoring. Rockets up by 15. Ains working off the screen. Played by Ori. Lecklock called on Cassell, and Phoenix will get the new 24. At Florida State, Sam Cassell, the backcourt partner of Charlie Ward, Florida State quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner. And he led the ACC and set a Seminoles single season record for steals, also an excellent three point shooter. Eight for three, and finally the Phoenix Suns hit. A three-pointer. That's their second. For Ainge's first, Barkley hit the other, and the Rockets are up by 12. Elijah Wong. Keep Elijah Wong taking advantage here of the matchup against A.C. Green. And the floor is spread so wide that nobody could get down to help and double-team on Elijah Wong, and just too much size and strength and able to shoot over A.C. Barkley isolated on Ori, and then pops it out. Cassell got a piece of it. What an outstanding first half for Sam Cassell. Oh, he's had an outstanding rookie year. Actually, he has supplanted Scotty Brooks, who's been a key figure for this Rocket team over the last couple of years. He has been their finisher and has done very well. He can't get off the pine. Ains for three again. Now the three-point shot getting the Suns back into it. They're down by ten. And the reason they're getting so many better looks now is because the ball is going inside the Barkley, draw the double team, and then make two passes. You'll get a much better shot. So the Rockets turn it over. Suns try to break down court and catch Houston. Barkley from beyond the arc. He hits the three. Look out, A.C. Green, Robert Ory had words, and Dick Rivetta very quick to break it up. And about three or four of the Suns were about halfway out on the floor, ready to come, hopefully, to break that thing up. The Suns have hit their last three from three-point land, and they're now down by only eight. Cassell, while Phoenix collapsed on Elijah Wong. They went with the double team, and it opened things up. And there's just no shot blocking in there right now, so it'll be wise for the Rockets to take the ball to the basket at every opportunity. Barkley drawing a double team, and that leads to an illegal defense call against Houston. Well, the Suns have been saying all series long, as Rudy Tomjanovich wants a 20-second timeout, but they have been saying all season long that Akeem Olajuwon is just playing goalie back in the lane and has been illegal many, many times, but they have not gotten a lot of calls. They finally got one there. Ball 
ball going inside to Charles Barkley and tapped right back outside to Danny Ainge as he is starting to feel it and then it's starting to give the Suns a little bit of life. But it's very difficult, Marv, when you have to constantly rely on the three-point shot. The Suns are going to have to do a better job, and that's coming out of the second half defensively to get some easy baskets the other way. Phoenix now 4 of 14 from downtown. Let's go back to Ahmad. All right, Marvin. The interesting thing is, on the previous timeout, Rudy Tomjanovic kept telling his team, do not give them the three-pointer. They came back, and Phoenix actually capitalized on three of them. Mark? All right, Ahmad, Rudy Tomjanovic, as a player, a five-time All-Star, as a Houston Rocket. This is 24th season with the Rockets franchise as a player and assistant coach and now head coach. Rockets getting off to that terrific start. Tying the NBA record most consecutive win starting the season, opening at 15-0. They went to 22-1. and Barkley, Charles Barkley has 14, and the Rocket lead, 116, is now 8. Charles Barkley did the smart thing there. After he gave it up out of the double team, he kept himself moving. He's right over the good shot. The cell, air ball. Barkley pops it down. Marley putting the move on Maxwell. And the Suns in the midst of a run. They've hit their last six shots, and they're down by only six points. 25 seconds to go in the first half. A 14-6 third by Phoenix. having trouble finding a shot. Three on the 24. Elijah Wan. Barkley with the rebound. Final seconds of the half. Here's Ainge. Firing. So the rally by the Phoenix Suns after the hot start by the Houston Rockets. Rockets led by as many as 16, but at halftime, it is down to a six-point Rocket lead. Charles Barkley with 14 points, 5 of 10 from the field, and Akeem Olajuwon, 7 of 17, 14 points, and 10 rebounds. Seventh and deciding game of the best of seven. Rockets by six. Stay tuned for Bob at the Prudential Halftime Report right after these words. Excuse me, Shetty! When the NBA comes out to play, they're slamming down a lot of Gatorade. Scientifically tested, athletically proven Gatorade. The Air Force has the stealth. Music has Sinatra. Paris has the Eiffel Tower. Perfectly pure, and the home of ice, Morrison Ice. Ice brewed in Canada by North America's oldest brewery to be a few degrees colder, a few degrees bolder, yet smooth as ice. Morrison Ice, from the land where ice was born. How do you handle these guys? With these countries? I have my ways. It's USA Basketball's Dream Team 2. The most exciting basketball team on the planet. This summer in Toronto, Canada at the World Championship of Basketball. This is no dream. I'm thinking about a curfew. Sunday, it's do or die for the Bulls and the Knicks. Last night with their backs to the wall, Pippen and the Bulls kept their quest for the four feet alive. Now the series ships back to Ewing and Company's home court for the decisive Game 7. A trip to the conference finals is on the line. When the ball goes in the air at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, Sunday on NBC. 
This is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. Well, just when it looked like a blowout, the Suns closed the half on a 16-6 run, and they make a game of it down by only six at 53-47. to Bob Costas back, along with Julius Irving. Your thoughts on the first half? I'll tell you, it's a good basketball game. It looked like Rockets were going to blow the Suns away. Uh, you see Charles Barkley's hobbling up and down the court and showing a tremendous amount of character, being able, able to be the leader of the team, knowing that he's injured. But the pattern in this series has been the team gets a big lead and the other team can come back. So we can't count out the Suns. But I think one of the adjustment, one adjustment they're really going to have to make is to make the Rockets shoot uh, low percentage shots. They've been able to throw the long pass, get a lot of high percentage shots, and when they've ran a set offense, they've gotten the ball inside and they're shooting the ball five or seven feet away from the basket. So the Suns will have to make that adjustment to be competitive in the second half. A quick look at the numbers for the superstars, Barkley and Elijah Wan. Charles with 14 points and six boards, same number of points and 10 rebounds for Elijah Wan, and, and Barkley in there virtually every minute, and unless it's a blowout in the second half, it should be the same, and he's just got to grit his teeth and get through it. Well, you know, the Suns want to ride the chuck wagon home, and you know who the Rockets want to ride home. He's taken 17 shots in the first half, so this might be one of those games in which Elijah Wan puts the ball up 30 times, and they've been pretty successful if he can hit a high percentage of those. Barkley, Green, K.J. Marley, and Ainge, the smaller lineup doing it for Phoenix toward the end when they cut into uh, the Rocket lead in the latter stages of the second quarter. Now, the second game of our doubleheader, the second game seven today, will be in Utah. The upstart Nuggets trying to pull off a second straight miracle. They beat Seattle, of course, in a huge upset in the opening round, and now they've come back from an 0-3 deficit to tie the Jazz at three apiece. The guys who will call the game are Dick Enberg and the snapper Steve Jones. Look, Steve is grinning from ear to ear already. They're having the time of their lives. Take it, Dick. Yeah, it's snap mania here in Salt Lake City. You know, there's uh, plenty of tension and anxiety is well documented game seven new york chicago houston phoenix in here with one exception dan Issel. he's got that twinkle in the eye tongue in the cheek approach like a man has all the chips on his side of the table the pressure's on the other side i'm sure that utah doesn't want to be the first team in the history of the nba to be up three zip and lose a series uh, so if you ask me, the pressure is all on the Jazz. There ain't any pressure on us at all. Because if we lose, people will say, hey, you've had a great run. Uh, we're looking forward to the future. Uh, and, you know, it was terrific to go through. But if we win, we've done something no other team in the history of this league's ever done. A thoughtful presentation by the history teacher for his young Denver team. You were surveying the local environs. Uh, what did you come up with? Well, I went out to feel the community and how they felt about it. We know that basketball historians tell us that you don't come back from 03. But the experts say it can't be done, and uh, the jazz community feel that it can. They kind of lost that loving feeling for this team. Uh, this team has been uh, uh, a little bit on the edge going down. So the Utah fans are nervous, and even the Utah players and coach say it's kind of like us against the rest of the world. Everyone rooting for the Cinderella Denver Nuggets. We'll be back in a bit to see what happens. Robert? All right, Dick and Snapper really looking forward to it. Game two of the two Game 7s today on NBC. When we come back, Bill Walton will join us, and we'll talk a bit more about the Nuggets and the Jazz. That's after a message from Prudential and a word from the NBA. over their heads, food on the table, rules to follow, values to live by, all the things you provide to give your family a sense of security and well-being, including this important piece of protection from the leader in individual life insurance, because you want to be able to sleep at night too. Peace of mind, it comes with every piece of the rock. You got 
gotta be smooth when you take it in the lane. It's the NBA. I really love this game. Oh, the NBA. Here's Cole and put it home. Cause in the NBA, it's crazy. We got guys with moves that amaze me. It's fantastic and crowds go insane. It's the NBA. I really love this game. I really love this game. Here they are celebrating after they forced the Game 7 in Denver. The Nuggets evening it 3-3 against the Jazz. And let's take a look at how they did it as we go back to an earlier point in the series. What led to Game 7 today? John Elway trying to psych them up. The other night, Game 6 at McNichols. Dikembe Mutombo in the lane here with two of his team-high 23 points. The Nuggets fought back from a 10-point deficit. Mutombo also had 12 rebounds and five blocks down the stretch. He led the way again. The jump hook down low. And Denver forces Game 7 in Utah, winning 94 to 91 as they go wild at McNichols. John Thompson among them. Only God know we still have our dream. You know, our dream can come through. Maybe we can go to the Western final. What you're seeing is just a manifestation of our hard work and, uh, you know, a little bit of luck, too. <laughs> Hey, it seems like we've been in this position before. I know one thing, we're not intimidated. We're going up there with a lot of the confidence and with the attitude that anything can happen. Carl, when it was 3-0, did you ever envision this series lasting seven years? I'm not a psychic, man. I don't know what you're talking about. We know that they're thinking about what happened to Seattle, up in Seattle in the fifth game. And uh, it, I, I think it's going to be difficult for them to go out and play completely free, completely loose. You have another one in you? Oh, yeah. Hey, it doesn't matter if I do. As long as these kids have another one in them, that's the important thing. All right, Julia Serving and Bill Walton are here. How important are the fans in this equation? All important. When I played at Portland, it was the same as X situation. You get them pushing you, and their passion creates the greatness in your play out there. But you have to remember that make your body feel perfect from the emotion of the moment, and then keep that mind calm because you've got to make great decisions. The Nuggets aren't home today, but neither were they home for the deciding game in the best of five against Seattle. And the Seattle crowd was different than the Denver crowd because they felt fear and anxiety, Doc, rather than exuberance. Yeah, no question about it. You know, the hardest thing to do is to go on the road in the seventh, in the seventh game and try to win when you're expected to win, when you're the favorite. But when you go in on the un as the underdog, as the Nuggets are, you know, it's probably real easy to do because nobody expects you to win. You've got to adopt a theme or a theory. And I remember in 82 against the Celtics in Boston Garden, uh, we went in and we thought about it being just us against the world. And that, that seems to be the same feeling the Nuggets have going in to play the Jazz. But, of course, your situation was different in that you had been ahead three games to one. You were no Cinderella team. You were certifiably terrific team and you had lost game six at home and now no one yeah. thought you could win and you were the last team last road team to win a game seven in the league 14 teams have tried since 82 when you guys beat the celtics but for utah to be excuse me for denver to be successful today they've got to play the pick and roll right when they double team stockton when he comes off they've got to bring a third guy to malone let somebody else beat you plus the backcourt for denver Rauf, and stiff, they've got to come up big. Everybody else has been pretty solid, inconsistent though for Abdul Rauf and stiff. In just a few seconds, we've heard from Doc, what chance do you give Phoenix to cut into this lead further? They're down six now. They're gonna to have to get hot from the perimeter. Houston is not shooting well. The injury to Barkley, I think is very serious. All right, well, another half obviously left in Houston. The Rockets lead it by six. We'll send it back to Marv Albert and Matt Gukas after these messages from your local station and we'll see you later in the day. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind, it comes with every piece of the rock. Sunday, it all comes down to this. The breathtaking season finale. Let's go to alert on all stations. The Sequest must make the ultimate sacrifice. Attention all personnel, we are abandoning Sequest. To save mankind, she must destroy herself. Three, two, one. Survive. This is it. The season finale. All new Sequest. 8, 7 Central. NBC Sunday. Zero to 60. Straight versus slalom. A demonstration of who 
Lexus is relentlessly pursuing the all-new Cadillac Seville SLS with the North Star system. Now with the new power of a smart lease. Just $499 a month for 24 months and $2,200 down. Tonight on the Empty Nest season finale. Doctor, I love you, I think. Laverne confronts her feelings for Harry. I don't think I can work for you anymore. Morgan Fairchild on the season finale, NBC Tonight. It's sister's biggest night. There's a tornado coming. The season finale, tonight. Naomi Judd delivers for her real-life daughter, Ashley. I think we're going to have us a baby here real soon. And a wedding surprise. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Will there be a honeymoon? Sister's season finale, NBC Tonight. Gonna take to the streets and spend some time on the road I need a truck that'll take me where I wanna go I need a Dodge, mm, Dodge Big Magnum engines, don't take them for granted Overall, the most powerful line of trucks on the planet That's Dodge, from America's truck stop, Dodge From 4x4s to club cabs, from Magnum V8s to the mighty Cummins Turbo Diesel They're all at America's truck stop, your Dodge dealer what are your chances when you're playing against the odds tonight at 10? Halftime at the Summit in Houston. Rockets have a six-point lead on the Suns. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, thanks, Mark. Paul, it looked like you guys were almost about to lose contact, but then you came back with a nice 16-6 run to close the first half. Well, it wasn't looking too good there for us, but uh, we just tried to get it under 10 by the by the half. I think with four minutes, we were down like 16, and we tried to get it under, under 10, and we did a little better than that. So we're shooting, what, 38%, and they're shooting 52%. For us to be six points, we feel real good. What about your spiritual leader, the guy that you go to, Charles Barkley, who seems to really be hobbling out there? Can he go? He's hurting, but uh, I couldn't keep him out there, out of the game right now. He's uh, he's going to go, and he'll do whatever he can. All right, good luck to you in the second half, Coach. Thanks, Mark. All right, back to you, Mark. Thank you, Amada. 16-6 run by the Suns to get back into it in the final minutes of the first half after they were down by as many as 16. And as Ahmad and uh, Paul Westfall were discussing, Charles Barkley trying to carry his club despite the fact that he is an obvious pain. Well, Charles is going to try to do it in any way that he can, whether it's shooting the ball, passing it, rebounding, stealing. And he's also the emotional leader of this team, trying to keep his team pumped up as much as possible. And they continue to get good three-point looks. When the ball goes inside to Charles Barkley and he draws the double team, it's going to create a two-on-one situation for Kevin Johnson and Danny Ainge. The good, crisp passing will enable Danny Ainge to get that wide-open look at a three-point shot. And when Charles Barkley gets the ball up out of double team, the wise thing for him is to keep moving without the ball, either to get an offensive rebounding opportunity or the jump shot as he got one right there. And Charles Barkley continues to struggle, however, Marv, running up and down the floor. He is in obvious pain. Still 5 of 10, 14 points, 6 rebounds. A look at the middle of January draft halftime stats the Suns dependent on three-point shooting one for the first 11 then hit three in a row to go four of 15 for the half and yes it did get them back into the game as for the shooting the Suns at 39 percent in the first half 17 of 44 and the Rockets have been consistent 24 for 46 52 percent back with the second half in a moment if you were to take every article, every review, every honor, every award, everything positive people have had to say about the Toyota Camry and put it on a wall, you'd need a very big wall. And now there's the new 1994 Toyota Camry with dual airbags, a new V6, and built in America. Imagine the wall we're going to need for that. Surroundings. Make it cooler. View. Cooler. When cold filtered isn't cool enough. Draft beer. Cooler. Ice draft. It's ice brewed below freezing, then cold filtered. Companion. Try hotter. For a smoother, better draft, taste the future. Ice draft. Only from Budweiser. 
Not all cards are bound by the paper they're printed on. NBA basketball cards are totally out of control! <laughs> Monday is the Fresh Prince season finale on location. The city of sisterly love. When Will goes home to Philadelphia. Ah! But when it's time to leave. I would never leave Philly. I love it here. Will he go back to Bel Air? Come on, we're going to miss the plane. I can't do it. Or stay in Philly for good. Well, when are you coming back then? I'm not. The season finale you can't miss. Fresh Prince Monday. Capacity crowd 16,611 here at the summit. In Houston, the Rockets have never played a Game 7 here at the Summit prior to this afternoon. Marv Albert, Matt Dukas, and Ahmad Rashad as this third quarter gets started. The Rockets lead by six. Elijah Wan up front, along with Fork and Ori Smith and Maxwell in the backcourt. Maxwell played by Marvin. Elijah Wan taking a lot of shots. This is 18th shot. 18 for 16 points. The Rockets 55 and the Suns 47. Setting the Suns. Johnson and Marley at the guards. Climb the Crockley up front of AC Green. Off the block. Here comes Smith. Maxwell sets for the three. And Maxwell has been quiet. And it will be Houston Ball. Well, you can see any kind of defensive play is going to get this crowd even more riled up and start some Houston fast break. And that's why they got started off to uh, you know, such a good uh, early lead in this ball game is a lot of missed shots by the Sun. As well as Ori sneaks inside on the underneath out of bounds play, and you just don't want to fall asleep like that. Robert Ori in his second season out of Alabama. Earlier this year, almost traded by all the speculation, and Dan Marley hits a three. Dan Marley missed his first three from downtown. Marley now with eight points, and the Rockets up by seven. The Suns are hoping that that three-pointer will get Marley going in that department. Elijah Wong. Well, Akeem worked off the double team, and then it was a one-on-one -on -one situation, and he was able to get to the hoop. Oh, the possession before Klein turned him away. He did make that baseline jumper. You just don't want to let him get in the lane. If he does put it on the floor and get in there, a big crowd has to show up. Kevin Johnson knocked out of bounds by Charles Parkland. Robert Ory with a good hustle play. Ory being funneled around by a hobbling Charles Barkley. Foul is called. Foul on Marley. That's his first. But both teams like to run a lot of pick and rolls as Marley trying to fight over there gets all tangled up with Otis Thorpe as Tim Marley has really struggled defensively this year. He was a former one of the best defensive players in the league as far as guarding shooting guards. He's really having trouble chasing them off screens and keeping them from penetrating. Klein battling with Elijah Watt down low. Now Johnson over to help. Smith for three. And he spent only one of six from the field. The Houston lead is nine. against Corey. Flying. Well, in contrast to what took place in game six, Klein is not able to hit that outside shot. And Elijah Wan turned it over. He's trying to get it over to Smith. It will be Phoenix ball. Phoenix Suns opened up the season winning 15 of 18, and then they, they tailed off through periods of impatience offensively, unhappy about their shots and action and post the victory. Molly turned back by Elijah Wan. Barkley for three. Green kept it alive. And a new 24 for the Sun. Three minutes gone by. Third 
quarter. Flying off the face. Rejected by Force. The ball goes back to the Rockets. Well, the last two times Charles Barkley has gotten the ball inside. Terrible spacing by the Phoenix Suns. This time, Marley decided to take the ball down the lane, and he is stone rejected inside by... First time on the play before Elijah on that time over Sport knocking Joe Klein's shot out of the way. Elijah on setting up off the dribble. Oh, what a move. He wanted to take it right at Joe Klein. Well, there's nothing this man can't do at the offensive end of the floor from facing up and shooting to tremendous post moves with outstanding footwork. This time, putting it on the floor, facing Joe Klein. The crossover dribble like a guard stopping on a dime and just a beautiful jump hook. An amazing offensive player. Catch an Inside Stuff special edition tomorrow on NBC. A brain inside a head in Ohio is studied by a surgeon in Tokyo. A mother's face in France appears on a telephone in New York. A virtual journey to any moment in time. The possibilities are endless. What's the next thing, Dion? Soccer, anyone? <laughs> NBC is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Powerade, the official sports drink of World Cup 94 and the next thing. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Back in Houston, Akeem Olajuwon has taken over here in the early going of the third quarter. You see his numbers for the game, but he's three for three from the field here in the third. A very tough man to defend against. The subject that we discussed with A.C. Green of the Sun. In general, you just really want him to uh, shoot shots th that are going to be contested. You can't really stop him from getting his shots off, but you have to make him shoot with a hand in his face. You have to get him off his normal comfort spots right on the block uh, and make him do something, some kind of variation. Uh, he's going to get shots. It's not a way you can just stop him altogether, but you can make it a very hard for him to get shots up too. Well, as you see, Kevin Johnson hit off the good pass from Charles Barkley. There's no question Akeem Olajuwon has been getting the shots, and he has been hitting them. 20 points, 11 rebounds, and two blocked shots for Olajuwon. Rocket 61, the Suns 52, and Smith lost it. He felt he was, he was deflected out of his hands, but he lost the dribble. And Paul Westfall going to the small lineup that was so successful late in the second period. A.C. Green will have to guard Olajuwon. They're going to have to come and double-team him on a catch and try to make somebody else beat them. Barkley protecting the dribble. Nice one-on-one -on -one move against Otis Thorpe. Thorpe doesn't seem to be himself playing with that bruised hip. He has been affected by the injury, trying to hang in. Six points, three rebounds for Thorpe. Elijah Wan again. Well, the double-team came and even a triple-team, but by the time Elijah Wan gathered that ball, he was so far into the lane, one of the extra players helped defensively. The Rockets lead by nine. Barkley. Charles now six for 13. He has 16 points, along with eight rebounds. They doubled up on Elijah Wan. Max 
contest shots here he's contesting him for a position and trying to front him but in so doing gave up such excellent position in the lane that not even a double team could help you've got to push him off the ball and then get the double team and then try to make those other guys beat you from the outside which they're capable of doing well ac green beating the rockets from the outside that's rare for ac here this afternoon rockets by 10 6.20 to go, third quarter. Smith, unable to hit. And he's Smith now, one for seven. Ainge hears it from the crowd, pitches it back to Butler. Johnson. The Rockets now lead by eight. They've led by as many as 16. Phoenix with the run at the end of the second quarter to move within six. And the Suns have come roaring back again. And the Rockets right now look like a very tired team right now. They're not even capable to keep up defensively when the ball moves for the Suns. So they should keep doing that at their offense today. Maxwell. And back comes Marley, protecting the dribble. Johnson delivers to Green, and he's fouled. Beautiful pass from Kevin Johnson. Off the miss, Dan Marley starting that fast break, getting it into the middle. Dennis Johnson does a good job stopping at the foul line and letting that defense run by, and then finding the open man, A.C. Green, who was really out of control and wisely used his body to draw that foul. Foul called on Otis Thorpe. That is number four on Otis. So A.C. Green, whose free throw shooting has dropped off in this series, goes to the line. He is two for two from the line today. AC signing with Phoenix as a free agent after eight years with the Los Angeles Lakers. Mario Ellie is back, replacing Otis Thorpe. So the Rockets are going to a small lineup, and mainly because Thorpe has the foul problems. You can see the back of AC Green's head with blood. Still showing, took, I think it was five stitches in that first half as he got hit with the tooth of Otis Thorpe. Rockets, 66. The Suns, 59. Houston Rockets, a team that come a long way two years ago. They allowed 104 points per game. Last season, got it down to 99 and led by Batman, Akeem Olajuwon, who has done it at both ends. The Rockets... Defensive play has improved even more so this season. Oh, he with the steal. Smith passed on the three, hits the two. Look at 70. The Suns, 59. Eddie Smith getting a lot of good looks at the basket because the man guarding him, Kevin Johnson, is trying to sag, drop off, and get in the lap of a live one. Danny Ames connecting with the three-point shot. That's his third of the day. And the Rockets lead 70-62. Akeem Olajuwon in this third quarter, five for five, for 10 of his 24 points. Here's Akeem with the spin on the double team. And then throws it out. Maxwell. Barkley gets position. Johnson pushes it down for Green, and he's fouled, hit by Ori. Well, right now, the Houston Rockets look like the more tired team right now. The, the transition defense that was so good for them in the first half. Very slow getting back defensively, but Rudy Tomjanovic is not blessed with a very deep bench. Carl Herrera, who injured his shoulder a few games ago, is out for another couple of weeks. And Otis Stork in some foul problems right now. They really don't have a legitimate backup for Akeem Olajuwon. Herrera suffering that dislocated right shoulder and 
In game five, Vernon Maxwell, like Otis Thorpe, also playing hurt, playing through the paint. There's Herrera, an important player for the Rockets. Maxwell playing through the paint of injuries, both hands hurt, and right ankle, injured wrist. It's that time of season, but you've got to play through it at this point. Everybody's hurt, sore, tired at this time of the year, but you have to go on professionalism and adrenaline. Just under four minutes, remaining in the third. Maxwell going last. 11 points for Vernon Maxwell. The Rockets 72 and the Suns 64. The winner will advance to meet up with the winner of Denver and Utah in the Western Conference Final. Johnson behind the back gets it back out for Ames. Johnson for three. Air ball. Four by Green. Barkley on the follow. Yes, and it counts. Charles Barkley will go to the line. Well, I don't know where Charles Barkley got the strength to gather himself and explode up to the rim. And dunk, other than the somewhat fear that Akeem Olajuwon would block this shot as A.C. Green gets his block, a shot blocked by Olajuwon. Charles Barkley knows He's going to have to stuff this to get it through. In earlier games in this series, he tried to lay a couple of those in and he tried to dunk a couple, and Elijah one knocked him out of there. Foul was called on Maxwell, his second. Now a discussion between the officials. The indication that the basket did count. We counted the basket, right? Which we all assume. It's Felix Trainer Joe Krosky. He could, uh, I think, work any boxing corner off the, his uh, excellent job to the back of the head of A.C. Green, who took five stitches in the first half. Game seven between Utah and Denver. From Salt Lake City coming up, Denver, only the second team in the history of the NBA to come back from a 3-0 deficit to force a seventh game. Thursday night, the win by Denver, the Nuggets' sixth straight victory in a do-or-die scenario. Timeout taken by the Rockets. 3.26 remaining in the third. Houston leading by six. Right now, when you go back in time at Rock Donald's, you can bring home special Stone Age souvenirs for uniquely chiseled bedrock mugs. These will look great with my bone china. Uh -huh. They're made of the latest Stone Age material, glass. Every time you buy any extra value meal or any other purchase, you can get a mug for just 99 cents. That is a rock bottom price. So collect all four, because even before they're gone, they're history. What you want is what you get at Rock Donald's today. I love it here. <laughs> Push. Told them you were living downtown, driving all the old men crazy. There they are. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. The cold one. So get out of the old and get into the cold. <laughs> If you're looking for a way to get from here to there that eclipses all other forms of transportation, look at this, the Mitsubishi Eclipse. Now you can buy a 94 Eclipse for $159 a month with 500 down. Or buy any 94 Eclipse and get factory cash back. The Eclipse from Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. But a black holler. Walk outside with that on in San Antonio. Now you burn up. <laughs> Super George, tell us about that finger roll from the free zone. Oh, line. yeah, that was my patented. That was my patented shot. One thing I could do was finger roll. <laughs> Coming up next, Sudden Death Saturday continues when Dikembe Mutombo and the Cinderella Nuggets face Carl Malone and the Jazz in a Game 7 showdown. Next on NBC.
Well, Charles Barkley has been hobbling right throughout this ball game, but he's played well. 18 points, 10 rebounds. Right throughout the season, Charles has talked about the possibility of retirement. Some take it seriously, some don't. Earlier, I asked him about it. And it's simple. It, I'm not going to take injections to play anymore after this year. And if the doctor cannot make me feel better through some surgical procedure, I'm not going to play. And that's, that's just the way it is. Charles Barkley was telling me yesterday that when the season is over, he's going to obviously get checked out by the Phoenix doctor, but two independent doctors as well to try to get some kind of a recommendation of what he should do. He has already talked with Larry Bird, who has gone through back surgery, and Charles is very much concerned with his future. He wants to enjoy life. He's put a lot of effort and work into his job here and obviously made a lot of money, and a lot of people still think he has much, much basketball left in him, but he's hurting right now. 3-10 remaining. Third quarter, Elijah Wan came up short against Green. Rocket lead is only six. Johnson with a wild right, shot baby. lands right, in the first right, row right, amongst right, the right. cameraman, and he drew the foul. That's number three on Elijah Wan. This is an open court situation, but Kevin Johnson is just fearless driving into a pack of tall trees and they're not afraid of contact in fact looks for it so he can get to the free throw line and in the half court setting he right now is the best penetrator in basketball i think when tim hardaway is healthy he is right there with him but this guy's the best right now johnson four for four from the line he has 16 points he has really turned it up in the playoffs average 20 points a game in a Injury hit regular season now just under 27 per game in the playoffs. Set back by a badly bruised thigh earlier in the year. Also been out with the chicken pox of all things and a, a strained right ankle. Kevin Johnson bringing the Suns within four. Sam Cassell has checked back in, played very well in the first half. That is knocked away by Johnson. Good job on pick and roll defense there. The Suns coming into this game thought they were going to trap all those pick and rolls to be aggressive, but Kevin Johnson went under and it enabled AC Green to keep contact with Elijah Lott. Cassell has the good range. That's a three. 13 points and five assists for the rookie out of Florida State. The Rockets lead 75 68. I just saw a little smile go across the face of Paul Westlaw, but it wasn't a smile of joy. He just doesn't know what to do right now with Elijah Wall. When they double him, they're starting to make the three point shot. If they don't, he's killing the man guarding him. AC Green has picked it up. He has 11. Rockets by five as we approach two minutes remaining in the third. Elijah Wall. Rebounded by Green, and he took a shot. A.C. Green has had a very tough day physically. That's number four committed by Elijah Wan. Well, there's just no way that A.C. Green at 6'9 and probably weighs about 230 pounds just able to do anything with Akeem Elijah Wan. He's trying to do his best to push him off the block. And all the Suns can do right now is try to keep Elijah Wan guessing. Sometimes come double and leave the three-point shooters open. Sometimes not come when he puts it on the, the ball on the floor, but Elijah Wan is reading it all very, very well. Phoenix spending much time at the free throw line. Earl Sheridan replacing Akeem Elijah Wan. Phoenix now 15 of 18 from the line. How about Houston only three of five, five trips to the free throw line. Well, it's hard to foul them. They're either getting breakaway layups or they're shooting three-point shots, or Elijah Wan is spinning away from you so quickly you can't get a hand on it. The Rockets lead by four. Elijah Wan now on the bench after picking up his four. Cassell and Maxwell in the backcourt. Three-point attempt by Ellie. Green with the rebound. Johnson pushes it down. A technical foul has been called. Looks like Ainge and Maxwell had some words. away. It's on, it's on Maxwell. Vernon Maxwell, who has had his explosive moments, been taunted from behind by, uh, by Barkley. And Vernon Maxwell throwing that left elbow and forearm area up in 
to the face and shin area of Danny Ainge. That's a two-shot foul. And a technical foul. Vernon Maxwell ejected by Joe Crawford in, in game number six. And uh, Rudy Tomjanovich telling us before the game that Vernon uh, Maxwell said he will remain under control. Sam Cassell earlier got involved with uh, Danny Ainge. Cassell apologized to his teammates for that. Take a look at that right side of your screen as Danny Ainge coming down to Whoa. set a pick, and that is... There is just no place for that, and Philly Oaks just calling the technical foul and two free throws had every right to throw him out of this building. That's uh, that's close to a punch. Hard to see from that angle, but uh, a punch means ejection. That's, that's about as close to a punch as you can get. That was a, a flying elbow thrown by Maxwell. One-point lead by the Rockets. The spin was fouled. A rare trip to the foul line for the Rockets. It's called on Ainge. You get another look at that uh, flying elbow from Maxwell. Was it an elbow or a punch? Or is there a fine line? And what is the difference? Well, technically not a punch because he is not closing the fist and, and throwing it. But that kind of elbow could do just as much damage and probably even more. And, of course, these two have a little bit of a history throughout this series. They've been going at it back and forth. Ainge really got under the skin of Vernon Maxwell in Game 6 out in Phoenix. And when you put those kinds of players, or really any players, together for a couple of weeks over a seven-game series, there's going to be bad blood. The Suns in the midst of a good run. A 15-6 spurt. Murray on the line for the first time. Rocket 77, the Sun 74. Houston has led by as many as 16 as we come up on one minute left in the third. Johnson lost his balance and lost the ball. He's on the recovery. This is off to Barkley. And a low play by Danny Ainge. A gigantic save by Danny Ainge as the Rocket or Suns not taking a, the opportunity with Elijah on the bench to make sure they take the ball to basket and get a good shot. They got away with one there on the steal by Ainge. Rockets now clinging to a one-point lead. Ellie. Barkley with the rebound. But the outlet handled by Ori. Trying to bang it off the leg and succeeded was able to get a piece of Marley. Well, Kevin Johnson trying to get some penetration here, not really getting a pick, but falling to the floor and losing it. But Danny Ainge come up, came up to break up the play and knock it loose from Mario Eli and Charles Barkley. Make sure that any time that Eliza Ron is on the bench, and he's not going to be there very often, you want to take the ball to the basket as much as you can because there is just no shot blocking threat. 35 seconds to go in the third. Sam Cassell trying to spread out the floor, making the motions to his teammates. There's Cassell looking for that room and then pitches it back out. Ori reluctant and shoots the three. This is from downtown. Excellent job by Sam Cassell to set all that up, taking the defense with it to the basket, kicking it back out to Ori. Ori it looked like he fumbled the ball, but that looked great leaving his hand. Houston by four. Ten seconds remaining. Third quarter. Barkley working against Ori. Down a two. Down a one. He will not get the shot off. Barkley upset. Big quarter for Kevin Johnson with 8.6 assists. After three, Rockets lead by four. We'll be back after a word from your local station.
research has demonstrated that the ergogenic effect of carbohydrate... No other beverage has been proven more effective than Gatorade. And consuming Gatorade during exercise has been shown... Absorbed 30% faster than water. Gatorade contains the optimal balance of carbohydrates and electrolytes. No other beverage has been proven more effective at replacing... Nothing as much as your deep-down body thirst better. Scientifically tested, athletically proven. Only Gatorade Thirst Quencher is liquid technology. For that deep-down body thirst. Come on to play! Meaningful luxury in the all-new Mitsubishi Galant means extraordinary attention to safety and security. These are a few of my favorite things. Standard dual airbags, available anti-lock brakes, height-adjustable front shoulder belts, tubular steel side impact beams, crumple zones front and rear, safety and security in the all-new Galant. From Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. Tonight on the Empty Nest season finale. Doctor, I love you, I think. Laverne confronts her feelings for Harry. I don't think I can work for you anymore. Morgan Fairchild on the season finale, NBC Tonight. It's sister's biggest night. There's a tornado coming. The season finale. Tonight, Naomi Judd delivers for her real-life daughter, Ashley. I think we're going to have us a baby here real soon. And a wedding surprise. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Will there be a honeymoon? Sister's season finale, NBC Tonight. And today we'll have clear skies, no precipitation, so it's going to be a beautiful day. You won't care if you have the only pickup in its class with four-wheel drive and four-wheel ABS. The GMC Sonoma. It's weather resistant. Guess again. It's your GMC truck dealer. Because right now, they're offering cash back on the GMC Sonoma. And that's some serious green. So see your dealer today. We're gonna miss you, Paul, but you left us in good hands. This is Cary Levin, your number one news and information station. It may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA. Well, Charles Barkley milking the clock at the end of the third quarter, trying to get a one-on-one -on -one situation with Robert Ory, but Danny Ainge comes over, and in so doing, brings his defensive man, and actually it's going to turn into a turnover as Robert Ory knocks that ball loose as the quarter ends, and Charles Barkley never really gets a shot off, and he is absolutely livid at Danny Ainge for the spacing on that play and not taking his defender away. So the seventh and decisive game of the Western Conference semifinal series has come down to the final quarter. Houston 80, Phoenix 76, Marv Albert, Matt Dukas, and Amon Rashad from the summit in Houston. Phoenix ball as we get underway. Barkley again posting up. Makes the move on Orr. Brings the Suns within two. Nice patience and better spacing that time by the Suns as Charles Barkley able to hook Robert Ory and overpower him in the lane and get his shot off before Elijah wants to come up. Keen is back on the floor playing with the four fouls. Ory for three. He's hit three from downtown. The Suns can tie the game right here. Suns are doing an excellent job on the defensive board and for all the outside shots that the Rockets take and so many threes, they are the worst offensive rebounding team in the league. It's amazing. Again, Barkley operates down low against Ori. Rebounded by Ellie. spinning his way down low against Green. Elijah Wong. He has 26. The Rockets 82 and the Suns 78. Well, A.C. Green, we keep talking about the disadvantage he's having trying to put his body on Elijah Wong, but anytime he gets the ball that close to the lane in basket, you have to come down big and hard. But Paul West
this ball feels he's more effective with Green than Miller or Klein working against Elijah Watt. Marley on the drive. Marley had the step, could not convert. He was expecting contact. We're told, incidentally, that Vernon Maxwell was not called for a technical foul. Maxwell, in the third quarter, when he threw that elbow, was hit with a flagrant foul, was not a technical foul. The Rockets celebrate with two minutes gone by on the fourth. They have taken a six-point advantage. The Cinderella Nuggets face the Jazz in a Game 7 showdown, next on NBC. This is the showroom where we sell the most Ford trucks. It's called the real world, and the only salesman is the truck itself. In fact, our trucks have sold so many people on Ford, we have more repeat buyers than any other truck, which isn't surprising. Because at Ford, we've always figured that if you make a habit of building better trucks, people will make a habit of driving them. Ford F-Series. For 17 straight years, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Her inquisitive mind, her desire to learn, her willingness to work, her need to achieve. All the pieces that add up to your need to learn all you can about college funding. So when your child is ready for college, you will be too. Her senior year, Dean's List. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. Just down Sunset and up the incredible California coast is Wolfgang Puck's latest culinary creation, Granita. It's a touch of the Mediterranean with a dash of the Pacific. And if you go there, bring your appetite for travel and your visa card. It's perfect. Because Wolfgang's grilled prawns will take you to the Mediterranean, but Granita won't take American Express. I love to cook, and I love to eat even more. <laughs> visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And then night, we're going to let it all hang out. Cold filtered Miller genuine craft. After midnight, we're going to check the cold water. <gasps> For those who've discovered its smooth draft taste, the world is a very cool place. We're going to call the top again. So get out of the air and get into the cold. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Today's Miller Moment takes us back eight years to the day. Lakers and Rockets, game five, score tied at 112. One second left in the game. Ralph Sampson stunning the Lakers with that shot at the buzzer. Houston won the series four games to one. And then Houston lost in the finals in six to the Boston Celtics. In recognition of this moment, Miller Genuine Draft will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall scholarship fund. The Rockets have had a strange and inconsistent history in Akeem Olajuwon's nine years with the team. One trip to the finals in a huge surprise at the moment we just showed you and eight times failing to get past the second round of the playoffs. Trying to change that here this afternoon. Sam Cassell has been one of the keys. 15 points. That is a career playoff high. Rockets have a six-point lead. 9.40 remaining in the fourth. Elijah Ross. Rebound Barkley. And here comes Johnson. Kevin Johnson with the spin. And a reach-in foul is called. It's on Cassell. Well, I mentioned that the Rockets are not a good offensive rebounding team. they got a small club out there with the exception of Elijah Ross. And of course, when he's shooting the ball, nobody is really crashing the board. But that does not take away from the excellent defensive rebounding game that Charles Barkley is having. First team foul committed by Houston. Barkley for Green. Johnson open. Nice dish for Barkley. Loose ball foul against Phoenix. of rotation passes, not taking the open jumper, driving by Elijah Wan and then finding a man open in the lane, but Charles Barkley pushing Elijah Wan from behind. And some uh, playfulness between Vernon Maxwell and, and Charles Barkley, although the Rockets try to calm down Maxwell. Maxwell off the dribble, 
He thought he was fouled by Marley. Maxwell with the steal. Well, Dan Marley has had problems with Maxwell throughout this series, trying to guard him on screens, trying to keep him from penetrating. That last trip, he did a good job forcing the bad shot by Maxwell. Marjuan gets inside, is being waved off, but a foul call before the shot attempt. AC Green charged with his second. I was trying to read Paul Westfall's lips there, but saying when the ball goes inside, I'm sure he meant for uh, AC Green to make sure you get behind Elijah Ron because there is just no help behind once AC Green commits. Elijah Ron and Cassell playing catch. Cassell keeps it alive. 17 points for the rookie, Sam Cassell. Well, A.C. Green did the better job of staying behind and forcing the jumper, but one of those rare offensive rebounds for the Rockets, and they turn it into the deuce. Kevin Johnson answering and brings the Suns within six. Four minutes in, fourth quarter, seventh and decisive game of the Western Conference semifinal series. Another seventh game coming up. That was assist number eight for Cassell, and Elijah Ron has 28 points. And Paul Westfall shook his head. He does not want A.C. Green to get on top like that and open up that easy lane for Elijah Ron. A rather forced to turn around jump shot. Houston by eight. Johnson forced it. Elijah Ron with the rebound. Cassell put the ball between his legs. And then the Rockets decide to regroup. Oh, what a learning and growing experience for Sam Cassell. He's having an outstanding game, showing all kinds of four. Elijah Watt with 30. And the Rockets lead by 10. Phoenix calling for time. Well, Paul Westbrook is ready to throw his hands up no matter what they try to do, but this is not going to work as AC Green gets caught on the top side. A nice, easy pass and there's just nothing green or anybody else on the Suns can do. This time a much better job of forcing back outside, but then he's got the beautiful turnaround jump shot. Seven minutes, ten seconds to go in the fourth. Yeah, didn't you see Chris uh, duck on Charles Barkley? Nice. You didn't see that. I went something like this. Put, put the cape on, though, because I was like Superman. Oh, yeah, you were. Let me, let me put that on. Precious Sam. Barkley, you see. Okay, well. Catch it like this, around the back. Precious Sam. I'm Barkley coming oh, to the Barkley trying to block it. Oh, wait, he's too high. He's too high. And, and then what did Barkley say? Do not. He said, I don't believe in role models, but uh, you mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What is it about Ford Taurus that makes it America's best-selling car? Is it the length Taurus wagon goes to to keep your family safe? Or the way it makes you forget you're driving a wagon while giving you everything you buy a wagon for? Perhaps it's all these things, and the fact you'd be happy to own it, even if you didn't need the room. Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America, again. Grandpa Shaq, tell us how basketball used to be. <laughs> well, the basket wasn't always 20 feet tall. What about 100-yard courts? Not even close. What happened? All sport. New All Sport. Unsurpassed taste. A third more carbs than Gatorade for energy. This is a body quencher. After All Sport, the game was a breeze. Until they put in the moving basket. All Sport. The game will never be the same. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by the Prudential. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. Well, the Houston backcourt of Vernon Maxwell and Kenny Smith, as we discussed at the start. Rudy Tomjanovich feeling that uh, their performance would be a key factor. Smith two for eight. Maxwell is... The man has...
has been the rookie out of Florida State. Sam Cassell. 22 minutes of play. 7 of 9. 17 points. 8 assists for the product of Dunbar High School in Baltimore, which has produced some pretty fair players. Uh, the likes of the late Reggie Lewis, Muggsy Bogues, Reggie Williams, and many others. David Wingate. Yes. Coached by Bob Wade. Seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Eames to three. Rebounded by Barkley. Barkley pops it back out. Johnson got the step. Protected the ball beautifully against Elijah Wilde. Well, trailing by 10 points, the Suns have gone into their spread the floor mode where they're going to look to drive and kick out for open threes or do what then, uh, Kevin Johnson did right there, take it all the way to the basket. Rockets have an eight-point lead, six and a half remaining in the fourth. Kelly gets it out to Cassell. Shot clock is at six. They got it up on Elijah Wilde. Paul Westfall staying with the matchup of A.C. Green against the team Elijah on rather than go with Joe Klein or Oliver Miller. And you may question that kind of uh, strategy, except that the Suns were within two points with that lineup at 80-78, but then the 10-2 run by the Rockets. And Ainge hits the three. Danny Ainge has come on. That's his fourth from downtown. He has 15, and the Suns are now within five with just under six minutes to go in the fourth. Maxwell played by Marley. Down to six on the 24. Ellie gets inside. he has got a piece of it, and Barkley is fouled. The combination of Ori and Elijah on making the play on Barkley. Charles Barkley with another rebound here in danger of losing that ball from behind by Robert Ory, but able to draw the foul as he continues to suffer with that full boy problem. It doesn't give him as much problem as the offensive end, and that's because he knows where he's going there. At the defensive end, he is really laboring. That was number four. Called on Ory for a piece on Ory and Elijah Wong. Again, single coverage on Barkley who gets it out. Here's Green for three. Well, A.C. Green not shooting it well from the top. Probably should move down to the right baseline to take Elijah on there. Barkley will still be able to see him and put the shooters up in those spots. A.C. 0 for 3 in the three-point department. He had been on fire coming in. Shot clock at 1. to set. For the Rockets, who now lead by eight with 4.40 to go in the four. Johnson took a hard hit through the foul. Well, in any of these playoff games, all any team is going to need unexpected production from unexpected sources. You just don't expect a rookie as Sam Cassell, although he's had a very good year, to come up with this kind of afternoon. And Paul Westfall has just been shaking his head all afternoon. If it hasn't been Elijah Wan doing his thing, it's been the outstanding play of the rookie Sam Cassell. That's four fouls on Cassell. Four Rockets with four. Johnson with the step. Nice lead. Kevin Johnson is hurt, holding his right arm. He was able to get it to A.C. Green, who brought the Suns within six. Here's Ellie on the drive, and he was fouled. Kevin Johnson is hurting. And K.J. has been driving to the basket all afternoon long, and let's keep an eye on his elbow here and here. He just may get dinged in the uh, crazy bone as it seemed like he caught that right elbow up on the top of Elijah Wan's shoulder. Is that, like the, uh, is that like the funny bone, the crazy bone? <laughs> <laughs> crazy and funny. The crazy not, bone. Not so funny to Kevin Johnson as he did catch it on Elijah Wan's shoulder blade as Sam Cassell and A.C. Green separate themselves from each other. Kevin Johnson has played every minute of this ball game as he's trying to get a little bit of life back into that elbow. 22nd timeout called by Phoenix. They have two full timeouts remaining. Houston with four and a 20. 
both teams with only three team fouls with 4.18 to go in the fourth quarter. It has not been a constant march to the free throw line, and you don't expect it when these two teams meet, mainly because of all the open court play and all the three-point shots. Kevin Johnson telling Paul Westfall that he will be able to stay on the floor. It's been an outstanding game for Kevin. 23 points, 10 assists. Rockets lead by six. 4-10 remaining. Fourth quarter. Elijah Wan getting in deep. Great position for Akeem Elijah He is 16 of 31 for 32 points. Houston 95. And Phoenix 87. lead is five. Houston Rockets trying to eliminate the team that went to the NBA Finals a year ago. Maxwell fouled. Where did Maxwell was out of the line? Last season, Phoenix at 62 and 20. The best record in the NBA in the playoffs. Beat the Lakers, although they had big problems with L.A. Just did get by three games and two. Then knocked off San Antonio. Seattle in seven. And the NBA final loss to Chicago, four games to two. While the Houston Rockets last season after beating the Clippers, three games to two, lost to Seattle in the Western Conference semifinals in a seven-game series. And Houston trying to move on to the conference final where they will play the winner between Denver and Utah. The Rockets 97, the Suns 90 with three minutes. 35 seconds left in the fourth. That was just the eighth and ninth free throws taken by the Rockets, and that's one strategy the Suns have not used on Elijah Wan, and that is foul him and put him on the line. He shoots it at 71%, but has had some bad stretches, but they are only with the three team fouls right now. Four. And Cassell calls for the timeout. He was trapped and wisely used the timeout. It's a 20-second timeout with 3.18 remaining on the floor. Akeem Olajuwon, 32 points, 15 rebounds, two block shots. Charles Barkley with 22 points, Kevin Johnson with 23 to lead the Suns. And a moment ago was uh, Barkley and Ori having some words as they headed back up floor. into the breadbasket of Robert Ory. He throws a little elbow right back at Charles Barkley. That was a little bit more of a playful jab, but not something you want to be doing at this particular juncture. 318 to go in the fourth quarter. Still lots of time, and the Rockets leading by seven. Houston shooting 52% for the game. Phoenix... 43. Now the double team on Elijah Watt who goes stops to throw outside. And it's a 24 second violation. And I think after that 20 second timeout, the Rockets lost their composure as far as knowing how much time was on the clock. Elijah Watt giving the ball up something he's done very well the last couple of years ever since Rudy Tomjanovich has taken over. He now trusts his teammate and has made him a better player. A.C. Green. So it will be Houston ball. The first, a timeout ball with 2.48 remaining in the fourth.
some people's idea of fun. Now, truck bowling, that's when things can get real interesting. But to do it right, you gotta have one of these. A 1994 Ford Ranger 4x4. Complete with push-button four-wheel drive, a whopping four-liter V6, and a wide, powerful stance. Get a Ford Ranger 4x4 and go truck bowling. Come on. I just love league nights. On the information superhighway, there are no hitchhikers. There are no speed limits. There are no rest stops. There are no troopers. But there will be a passing lane. A passing lane. Top-ranked Steffi Graf, a victory in Paris, would give her five straight Grand Slam titles. Number one, Pete Sampras, a win on the famed red clay of Roland Garros, would make him only the fifth man to capture all four Grand Slams. The world's greatest tennis players battle at the sport's most grueling Grand Slam. The French Open, presented by Fresca. Coverage begins next Saturday. This has been a most unusual series. The Suns won the first two games in Houston, and Houston won three in a row. Only five teams have ever come back from 0-2 to win in a best of seven. Chicago did it last season against the Knicks. Not since 1969 has a club lost the first two at home and then come back to win in a seven-game series. The Los Angeles Lakers did it against the San Francisco Warriors. 2.45 remaining in the fourth. Rockets with the ball, and they have a seven-point lead. Rudy Tomjanovic staying with Otis Thorpe on the bench, bothered by the bruised tip, also with four fouls. Ainge got a piece of it. Cassell rescues. Shot clock running down. Here's Cassell with one on the 24. Green with the rebound. Good defense that time by the Suns, and a deflection by Danny Ainge to force the Rockets into a tough shot situation. You know, plenty of time. Green missed the tip. Elijah Wong, able to haul it in. We come up on two minutes remaining. And the four. Maxwell for Elijah Wong, who draws the double team. Got clock at five. Maxwell going baseline for the fadeaway. Ellie. Got to keep it alive. Johnson, did he call for time? Or was he close? He was close. Foul call. Foul committed by Maxwell. I think Kevin Johnson was looking around to call time. Not in the penalty yet. So it'll be just Sun's possession. Looking now to penetrate and kick out to the open three-point shooter. Rockets and Sun each have four team fouls. Looking for the charge. Kevin Johnson off the high pick, but a crossover on the dribble as Mario Ellie looked to have excellent position there as the crowd looks at it on the screen at either end of the building. And even Daryl Garrickson, the trail official, was starting to walk the other way. Nevertheless, Kevin Johnson goes to the free throw line is now 14 over the limit of the penalty. Kevin Johnson now six for six. The foul line, Rockets 97, and the Suns 91. And one player the Suns may consider fouling now is Vernon Maxwell, normally a good free throw shooter, just 6 for 12 in this series. Well, it is a five point Rocket lead. Houston, well aware of the come from behind ability of the Phoenix Suns, they came back from a 20 point deficit. Back in game two. Down to five. Elijah Wong and the Suns won the traveling ball. Because he did walk as A.C. Green put his arm and hand in there to get a piece of the ball. Elijah Wong walked right through. Another one to rebound. A minute 20 remaining on the four. Rockets with a seven point lead and the ball. Continue.
continue to let the Rockets eat up a lot of time. I'm really surprised they're not committing foul there. It's getting to be a very, very desperate situation with just one minute to go. Trailing by seven. Barkley. Foul by Maury. Back to the other end as Elijah Wan gets the ball inside. AC Green going to reach in and get a piece of the ball as Elijah Wan picks him up and lays him down. And that should have been a walking violation or a jump ball between A.C. Green and Akeem Olajuwon. Olajuwon with 34 points and 16 rebounds. Charles Barkley, 2 of 3 from the line. 56 seconds remaining in the fourth. Barkley with 22 points, 15 rebounds. Well, look at Charles has been playing hurt right throughout. You get the idea. He is at the final seconds of a 12-round heavyweight title fight. Well, he's been talking about it all year. I don't think he's going to make that decision today, tomorrow. It's something he's going to have to give a lot of thought to the rest of this summer. Rockets by five. Cassell pressured by Marley and Johnson. And is able to get it across. Shot clock at 10. No fouls being given here by Bennett. I'm really shocked that they have not committed fouls on this possession and maybe the last two or three. But nevertheless, they get the turnover. A steal by Green. It's only a five-point game. Barkley looking for the three. Good fighting. Here's Marley. Way short. To show and a foul is called. Dan Marley continues to struggle. Marley three for ten from the field. The Rockets are headed for the foul line. All Dan can do is ground. He's got very strong legs, and when he gets them under them, he normally puts up a nice looking shot. That thing fell about four or five feet short, and he is at a loss for answers. The combination of Akeem Olajuwon and Sam Cassell have scored 17 of Houston's 19 points here in the fourth quarter. Akeem with 10, and Cassell, who has had the NBA game of his life, now has eight points in the fourth, 21 in all. Well, the Rockets do not have a lot of depth up front, and... Now, it's been a problem for them all season long, but their depth in the backcourt has certainly paid off, especially today with Sam Cassell. 22 for Cassell, one shy of his NBA career high. It is a playoff career high, and they are celebrating at the Houston bench with 23 seconds to go. Are you still drinking the old thing? Try the next thing, Powerade, with 33% more carbos than Gatorade and a taste you can really slam. Powerade, the next thing. Since your face can't adjust to your razor, your razor should adjust to your face, which is exactly why we designed the Schick Tracer. The Schick Tracer is the only razor with blades that bend and flex to the unique shape of your face. So the tracer gets in close for a clean, comfortable shave. And since you can't change your face, maybe you should change your razor. Shit, you're changing the face of shaving. You want to grace the campuses? There's no bad trip through the block like this. Just some bags that bust to pieces. Brings you down with all their greases. Hop, hop, Pringles, dance, hop, 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 Pringles, dance. You got the sack, you got the bunch. For a whole lot of taste of the Pringles punch. Now, pop the fresh country taste of new Pringles Ranch. Sunday, it's do or die for the Bulls and the Knicks. Last night, with their backs to the wall, Pippen and the Bulls kept their quest for the four feet alive. Now, the series shifts back to Ewing and Company's home court for the decisive Game 7. A trip to the conference finals is on the line. When the ball goes in the air at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, Sunday on NBC. 
Good point out, Matt. That is not a uh, an NBC uh, made sign. Very professionally made, though, with the uh, the peacock, the logo showing as Charles Barkley may be winding it down for the season. Akeem Olajuwon with 34 points, 16 rebounds, 20 of the 34 in the second half. Phoenix down to one timeout remaining. And the rookie, Sam Cassell, so brilliant here this afternoon in 29 minutes. 22 points on 8 of 11 from the field. Rockets with the jump start. They were up 16 to 4. Phoenix has come back on a several occasions. Here's Barkley way off on the three-point attack. And that should be the rapper as Mario Ellie has become the celebration. Down to 10 seconds. been ejected for the second straight game. Dick Pavetta with the ejection. Rudy Tomjanovich was upset, as happy as he is about this impending victory. Very upset that Maxwell lost it once again. Well, as all coaches at this time of the year, with the motions running so high, players going at one another for a lot of games, you're always concerned. You want your guys to go out there and play with a lot of emotion, but you also want to keep that under control as Barkley, the extra hard shove on Olajuwon knocking him hard to the floor, which brought Vernon Maxwell into the play to get right into the chin of Charles Barkley, who pushes off, and that'll send Maxwell to the showers quickly. Barkley being ushered aside. And apparently he has also been tossed. And Charles going to delay this kick to the locker room as long as he can. As he turns back to uh, Darrell Garrison and Dick Vetta to have a few final words. This is not the way that Charles was looking to end the season. He heads past our broadcast location in the direction of the Phoenix locker room. Double technicals on Barkley and Maxwell. So that is ejection. Wow, a very difficult season for Charles with the injuries. The Paul Westfall and the Suns organization taking a very conservative approach and keeping Charles out, getting him as much time to rehabilitate and rest the knee problems and the back problems to try to have him as healthy and ready as possible for these playoffs and he almost worked and it looked like they were on their way in this series when they first won the first two games. Seven and four ten seconds. Hakeem Olajuwon with an outstanding all-around performance. 37 points. 17 rebounds. Three blocked shots, leading to the frequent chance of MVP from this crowd at the summit. The Houston Rockets on their way to the Western Conference Final. And they have to put it the Phoenix Suns. 104 to 94. So the Suns who went to the NBA Finals facing Chicago last season have been eliminated. While the Houston Rockets are able to get past the second round after falling short eight straight years. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? All right, thanks, Mark. I'm here with Sam Cassell and Akeem Olajuwon. And first of all, Sam, you are not supposed to be playing that way as a rookie. Well, uh, Rudy gave me the opportunity to play. Uh, my teammates got a lot of confidence in me. I just play uh, to have fun and play hard. So, Akeem, you have had sudden fine season, some fine playoff series here, and I know you're happy to be moving on. I'm just so happy we won this game. Game 7 is such a dangerous game that you can't really play your game. I'm so glad we pulled this one over. You guys played like veterans, especially this young man over here played like a veteran. I know. <laughs> 
I'm just so happy we won. It was a team effort. And uh, we like to take it all the way. All right, Sam, any preference as to who you play in the next round? Well, it doesn't matter. We're just glad to be there, and we'll be there. All right, congratulations to both of you, and good luck to you in the next round. All right, all right back to you, Marv. Well, the veteran, Akeem Olajuwon, and the rookie, Sam Cassell, combining to lead the Rockets to the victory. Olajuwon, 37 points, 17 rebounds. Cassell, 22 points and 8 assists. Again, the final, Houston, 104. The Suns, 94. Coming up next, Game 7 between the Utah Jazz and the surprising Denver Nuggets. The winner moves on to the Western Conference Finals against the Rockets. Marv Albert, Matt Gukas, and Bob Rashad saying so long from Houston.